My parents haven't missed a game yet. Uh, they've been there every time. Uh, they're usually the first in the stands, as I've noticed. My dad always likes to watch warm-ups, uh, see how I'm doing. He'll text me, give me a few pointers, let me know what's going on. <laughs> so they're always there. Sometimes you kind of have to pinch yourself, especially like the first or second year you're there. It's like this is really happening. The kid's really out there playing in a game that's on television. It's kind of a, something that makes you very proud, but it's kind of shocking too. You can't really believe it's happening. It started out great. He was kicking a lot of field goals. I know he was happy to be at the 5,000 feet altitude. Kickers like that, so everything was fine. I was ecstatic, it really was. Uh, it was a great game so far, the team was doing well, kicking really good. I was excited going into halftime. That's about when I, I found out about my dad and my heart sank. I started having chest pain. At first I wasn't too alarmed. I thought maybe it was just altitude and the heat and the excitement. And I started feeling worse. And at that point, it was unambiguous. I figured I'm having a heart attack. So I sort of staggered down that ramp back to the area below. On the way down, I saw Ian coming off the field. And I debated whether or not I should notify him or not. And then I decided, no, I'm going to do it because we never keep things from our children. I'm, I'm going to let him know. I think he would be more upset if we didn't let him know. I could see the distress on his face, and he came out to talk to me and talk to his dad. I told him I loved him. That was the first thing. I gave him a hug. I saw how he was feeling. And I remember him coming over, and he was really concerned. And I remember telling him that he needed to go back and, and play the game because he'd come all the way out there with his team, and it was a close game. And he had a commitment he needed to fulfill. I've always been told, as has my sister, if you start something, you have to finish it, no matter what, no matter how hard it is, you have a job to do. When I found out at, at halftime, I just went to him, I said, listen, if you want to go with the paramedics and be with your father, you know, go ahead, feel, feel free to do that. And basically he said, no, coach, my dad wants me to stay here and, and focus, you know, what I'm doing and be with the team. God knows what he was thinking. Put yourself in his position, what you would have felt like if someone you really loved was in a life or death situation. Usually I calculate the distance. I figure it out, that's one of the first things I do. For this kick though, I didn't. I ran out there and told myself I was gonna make the kick like I had before. I was gonna do it for my dad. There's the snap, the hold is down, kick is up. This one has the distance, it is up and it is good. Another big time delivery from Ian Fry. It's the power of the human spirit. It's the power of what servant leadership is, which you forget about yourself and you concentrate on others. And in this situation, Ian was able to focus and rise above you know, the issue that was going on with his father, and he performed on the field. I don't think I could have if you know, been in that situation because uh, we're very close and I know he was very upset to see me in that condition and not knowing what was going to happen. I'm glad he was able to make the kick. But after the game, you know, I spoke about it, you know, to the team about how important family was, about, you know, you know, make sure that you do things, make sure you, you, you always reach out to your parents or loved ones and tell them how much you love them, how much you care about them. Because if something always happens where you don't have a chance to say those type of things. You never know what any day will bring you. And this was an example. So we hope tomorrow's not quite as exciting. When you go through something like this, it's, it's definitely um, a bonding experience. This experience definitely did bring the two of us closer. We're texting more, calling more, because we both realized that, you know, you can't take life for granted, that no one's going to be here forever. So you really have to cherish every moment. Do everything to the best of your ability, because you might not get another chance.